Hey everyone, this is Matt from DrawingTutorialsOnline.com. How are you guys doing out there? Well, I just want to share with you a really cool screencast tutorial that I put at the end of a part uh, for this long pose figure drawing over at our site. And it's about uh, 28 minutes long, actually. Now, just a quick heads up, we didn't draw from the photo, we drew this model from life. So if she looks a little different from the photo, that's because she is different from the photo. Uh, so yeah, check this out. I think you'll learn something new and uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought about it. See you soon. Pulled out value. So what, what we've been working on is that torso, upper legs, and the portrait. And now it's time to branch out. So we, we do have some targets for the hands. You, you can't even see them. We have some targets for the lower forearms. And we have some targets and some light containment lines for the lower legs. Okay. Let me just zoom in ever so slightly. That's better. So right now in, in this shot, what, I, what I'm starting to do is, is just to work with some containment system and some angles, working from light to dark with these legs. So what's my thought process? Okay, so my thought process is basically, let me, let me get a little bit more of an opacity. It's, it's just pretty much this and uh, this. All right, that, that's it. Now, when I put those two angles in, you know, we, we've already done this, okay? We've already done that. And so that, that's the, the width of it all. But now what I wanna do is I wanna come on in and, and I wanna start to get like a, a little bit more refined. Let me just write something down. And the refinement is this constant opposing angles, all right? And uh, don't, don't get too caught up with working uh, in, in too, too many details here. You just really want to remember to uh, get the overall big angle. And then that big angle, what, what lives on that are these micro angles. Couple things here that are actually really important. I know I've said through this tutorial many times that you've got to work from light to dark. <clears throat> and I'm going to work on her right leg first, her right lower leg, and then I'll progressively go to her left lower leg. Uh, so it's, it's, it's just a, a constant reminder about um, a little bit more light to dark, a little bit more patience. Now, something that is also very important that I see a lot of people do, a lot of the students do who submit images in the critique gallery, is they will draw the top of the foot with a concave like that. So what you really want to pull from this first image is more so than the angles because um, we've gone over the angles and, uh, you know, I, I don't want to over, overdo them. I, I, I tend to overdo them, but that's okay. I'd rather drill it into your head. But more importantly, I, I, I think what is most important is that you understand that this has to um, bow up. Okay, it's just the arch of the bones in, in your foot. And yeah, yeah, absolutely, we you know get it with an angle, but you, you just really, really, really wanna make sure that that bows up like that. So, so very important. Now, just like when we work on the hand, which is what we're gonna be doing next, you don't wanna first draw each individual toe. First, you wanna just get in the angles of where those toes are gonna live, all right? That is really, really, really important. So just come on in here, get the overall, then you know, map out the foot in terms of the big macro angles. But always remember, you're, you're not gonna draw a foot this way, okay? I'm exaggerating. And uh, the other thing that is so, so very crucial to drawing a foot is rolling in with this ankle. Now that's the layman's terms. That is basically your fibula. And right over here, this just comes right on into that angle. And then you could immediately start to give me some round lines, which is what we did. So if we go to the next uh, image, so image number two. Okay. So what's the next thing? Nothing really, really crazy. Just looking at this negative space. So as I'm drawing this foot, I, I don't want to get too caught up with too many details uh, as, as I'm trying to get both of these feet to work together. It's really this closed negative space, okay, to get these feet to work together. And then it's this open negative space. 
So that's the definition of close. Like you, you kind of can't get out. You're, you're trapped in there. And open, you have a way to, to kind of come on out. And it, it's just really a combination of understanding that the more angles you put on a foot or on hands, uh, the better they're going to look. And that you are continually, continually going to be measuring up. You're going to look at these negative spaces. And yeah, I, I, I guess I can say that I'm falling victim to really working the edge here in, initially. But eventually I start to work on the interior. But right now, I, I, that's the process that I like to use. I really, really like to use the edge. As we progress, slide number three or image number three. Same thing now. So when you're looking at our hand, I, I think hands are just as hard to draw as a portrait, okay? Uh, you can't look at, you know, all the bones and, and all of the doodads within each finger, the fingernails. You, you just gotta try to remember my philosophy. You're gonna put a mitten on her hand, not a glove. So this is how we are going to draw that mitten. We are going to draw it with these big angles. So that would be your first part. Now, we already had some angles there, but now we're coming on in. Now, remember, this photo is different than what I was looking at. And you just really, really want to come on in here and get these big contain the hand with the containment system. This is where understanding that you have to do this constantly in your sketchbook is key. Okay, just always, always, always trying to draw these abstract shapes and to try to get the angles right of those abstract shapes. Now, obviously, I'm not right. This needs to be wider, but you get my point. Okay, so we start with bigness and we think about a mitten shape going over that glove. Where are we? Three... Four. Cool. Now, once you kind of are confident, now it's time not to live on the edge. So you could first uh, come on in and start to think about separating the thumb from the hand. Okay. I think that's something that is really cool to do. And I, I would encourage you to separate the thumb from the hand. And the, the next big thing, because we're trying to think of her hand as a box, is let's, let's use a layman's terms. A layman term, I should say. <clears throat> the knuckles, okay? Think about the top of that hand. And that top of the hand is basically what we like to teach a lot in the memory drawing tutorials. That right there is basically a, a big flat box. And so what is going to show that surface plane shift uh, is really crucial that you draw in those knuckles first. Now in the photo, uh, the knuckles are kind of going this way. I'm a very popular guy today. Just shut that off. Uh, they're, they're rolling. So that, what I just did there, is the gesture to those knuckles. Okay, let me just look over my notes here. I want to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Yeah, so let me see. Next slide. This is four. Let's look at five. Perfect. Okay, here we go. So now this one will get a little bit more nitty gritty for you. So yes, we, the way that I'm drawing this knuckle gesture is like that. Okay, that's pretty much my box. Okay, now the next joint down, the separation between the uh, phalanges is this wraparound. So that's another gesture. And from that gesture lies in a, another surface plane. Okay, so we're not using tone yet. We'll, we'll do tone after. Right now, I'm just dealing with the fingers, trying to get you to understand what's going on in my mind. So now we can do the next joint. And so we have the side of that. So you get my point. So now each one of these 
And we go over this a lot in how to draw the hand, a layered approach here at drawingtutorialsonline.com. So e each one of these surface planes, so we're gonna call this one a top. Um, we're gonna call this a top front. And we're gonna call this a front plane. And that's turning under. So let's just call it an under plane. And we're gonna call that the side plane. Pretty generic, right? Uh, so now if I just very simply lessen the opacity here, that would be our darkest. You can see it on our fingers right there. Next darkest. And I, I'd say the lightest part of our hand is, is kind of uh, on this top front plane. And the top of her hand goes a little bit darker. Not that dark. Let's, let's, let's exaggerate here. Now, that, that is crucial, all right? Now, if I could um, backtrack, this is image five. Let's go back to four. So you, you also, as, as you're doing this, I, 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 could, I could give you the same old, same old here, but you're, you're basically now just looking for these, these angles of each individual finger. And of course, you know, you're, you're going to be looking for any negative space in between the fingers. There's uh, each, each one of these should be just like a limb. Just like a limb, we always say it's an S-curve. Every part of a limb is an S-curve. Same thing with each bone, you're going to have an S-curve. Okay, I, I, I can't tell you how important that is. Yeah, you can see how I'm starting to shade just a little bit on uh, from, from this joint down. So where one phalanx, which is this little bone here, touches another phalanx, you kind of get a ball shape over here. Okay, so that's what I'm starting to indicate by turning under because you're just basically getting two of the ends of bones hitting each other. Actually, this would be like this because we have one more joint, one more joint. And so when you have these bones like this, they form a round, and that is why you're starting to see. You see it right there, too. So it's starting to turn under. That's a great place to wrap in some convex line. A, a very good place to do that. And by the same token, you're getting that ball shape right over here where those, where each phalanx uh, meets its metacarpal. So your metacarpal, let me just very quickly try to get this in. Now you've got like another ball shape. And that ball shape is going to be pretty light. So you can indicate it with like a little highlight like that. And uh, look at the thumb. I mean, same thing now with, with this thumb. We're, we're really just trying to, with a little bit of tone, e each little joint in there. The, the very, very important thing with, with drawing these hands is that you do not, you do not want to outline um, each fingernail with such an aggressively dark line that would that would be no good let me just clean this up yeah big time so I, I I love looking at these diverse love is a pretty strong word but it, it, it just helps tremendously when you're trying to get that hand. So you're thinking about a lot of things, right? You're, you're thinking about your bones. You're thinking about your form. You're thinking about measurements. Uh, and then you're thinking about convex line, wrapping these lines around to show that the finger is a cylinder. It's funny because that finger is a cylinder and it's a box at the same time. We are looking for seven. Cool. So now, as, as you progress and as you start to add more details, again, like, like I said, look, look at the details on this finger, how 
all of those angles, not just a straight line. I understand there's all different time durations to your artwork, uh, but the more you can give me more detail on those fingers, the more interesting your drawings are going to look. Okay, so we have a convex line over here, we have a convex line over here, we have a convex line that goes into tone here. You can have a vertical one that goes into that uh, extensor tendon on, on top of the metacarpal. Uh, some convex tone over here, all just wrapping around on that underplane. And very faint, faint um, fingernails. Now, the other thing that you want to do now is incorporate a little bit of these modeling factors, right? And so a little bit of cast shadow on that chair and then our long cast shadow wrapping around the chair. You see this? See, that's really important because that long cast shadow is going to attach that hand to the chair. Not only is it going to attach the hand to the chair, so the hand is not floating in midair, but it's also going to give us an opportunity to take the side plane of that forearm and the side plane of that part of the hand and blend it into that cast shadow. So when you blend your objects into a cast shadow, it, it's just really a fantastic thing to do for your atmosphere. And if you could have that cast shadow wrap around the form, well, that, that's even better. So this is, is, is wrapping a little bit, or at least your pencil stroke direction should be going down because this part of the chair is a little bit more vertical. It's actually starting to turn a little bit over here. So you could see even on the chair that that's the lightest part of the chair. And so if we pull from that, that's the lightest part, so that's the lightest part of our hand. That's actually really cool. Just looking before I move on here. Yeah, very, 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 very cool. Now, you also don't want to forget about the big picture, all right? What do I mean? So, light is coming from this direction, and our big picture is that we want to, from top to bottom, top to bottom, keep that shadow touching everything from top to bottom. And that is how we are going to create that big overall form. And, and that is crucial. Now, I'm, I'm not doing it so much on her fingers. You know, 20, 20, so I'm doing it a little bit over here. That's a top to bottom shadow. And uh, for whatever reason, her fingers don't even look too dark over there. Um, but if I pull some philosophy... That is the side of the box. So technically, even though I, I don't see it on her hand here, technically that should be a top to bottom. So here's our top. Here's our bottom. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You want to be very consistent with that. All right. So it, it's all about the value setup. It's all about the value setup. The other side of the arm, before we get to a little bit of background tone, is just uh, it's just a little bit more of convex. This is your box. This is your round part. Okay? This is a little boxy over here too, that bicep area. So really starting to uh, make some headwinds. Here's a beautiful convex tone that rolls in. And uh, let's, let's check out image nine. All right. So now, same type of thing. We're stepping back a little bit. Just looking over my notes. I, I don't want to miss anything. It, it, it truly is the same type of thing that we were just working on. It's, it's top to bottom shadow. You see what we're doing here? We have top to bottom shadow. Top to bottom shadow. And even on the torso. 
top to bottom shadow. You want to be very consistent with that because that will give your figures uh, length, connection, consistency, uh, and it, it, it just is going to make your drawings look a whole lot better. Now, <clears throat> on this leg, most of that lower leg is, is totally catching light. It, it, it truly is. That, that shadow is really, really skinny. And, and basically what I'm doing here with this shadow is really paying attention to the anatomy. So it's this kneecap, tibia, all right? And uh, yeah, and then this, her right leg is going to be cast in shadow on her left leg. Uh, let's go back to these feet and let me just... The other thing that is uh, super important when you're drawing the, these feet, our first line, yes, was the line that the toes lived on. But you really, really, this, is, this will make or break your figure drawings, believe it or not. If you don't give me a little bit of a front plane, uh, your feet are going to, they're kind of going to look like flat pancakes. And you can see over here, I'm actually even giving that side of the foot a tone. And that tone is indicating to the viewer that her foot is not a flat pancake. It has a side plane and it also has a front plane. So the front of that toe is a front plane. Now, in the grand scheme of things, these toes on this drawing are really, really, really tiny. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to have a lot of room like to put the front plane on every single toe there. And the other thing, you do not want to go super dark with that. Because if you go super dark, then you're going to attract too much attention to it. Uh, there, there's lots of different ways to think about this foot. You know, you can think of it as here's a top plane. It, you can... You can also think about this foot. I, I, I love thinking about the foot this way because it makes it so simple. That's, a, well, let me, let me redraw that. That was a little frumpy. This is our peanut shape with a convex. And then I always say this over and over again. And when I draw feet tutorials or foot tutorials for my class or here on the website, this is another what I would call mini me peanut shape, the ball of the foot and the big toe. Okay, so those are two different approaches to drawing the feet. One is a more of a surface planes approach where that technically would be our front plane, top plane. This technically would be our side plane. Here's another surface plane that kind of turns and then your front plane, side plane. This is this foot. I'm seeing the arch of the foot, so it's, it's a much more organic way to draw the foot. And even here at the kneecaps, like this is really what I, I want you to see. It's these angles, kneecap, that is really important that you get the complication of that. And then you also get top plane of that kneecap, and that would be our front plane of the kneecap. So here's the top plane of the kneecap. Not, now, not all of the kneecaps in shadow, just that little part because most of that side of the leg is very, very light. Um, the other major bone you, you want to look for is the fibula. Now, you can see hamstring tendons coming on in and attaching right to that. That, that's very, very, very important. So a lot going on here, a lot of thought process going on. And as always, what's right below? Okay, you always keep that in mind. What's right up above? And size relationships. Don't forget, compare the length of her foot. How long is that compared to, say, from a kneecap to here? That's, that's important. So maybe her leg is, uh, upper leg is, is two and a half feet long. All right, now this is nine. Let's check out image 10.
So yeah, absolutely. So now you, you start to see the drawing starting to have some integrity because of the top to bottom light and shade. So that's important. And you can see now we're starting to work on her left leg. And if we zoom in ever so slightly, you see the shading and how different it looks. So this is more of an arch of the foot, very round, very uh, cylindrical type foot. This is a little bit more surface planey because it's the outside of the foot. We don't really have a convex line that rolls in here. It's more about like a convex tone. Lots of roundness. Separate. This is very good where you can show me the front of that foot, right? Uh, is a, a little bit darker than the top of the foot. So the top of the foot is going to be a little bit lighter, just not as light as, you know, her torso. So sometimes when you're drawing the feet, also, what you want to do is you could, from a foreshortened point of view, you would draw this toe as one unit, and then these toes, the other ones, the big toe is separated from the little toes. And that's another way from that vantage point to show the surface planes as well. And I remember one day when I first noticed that, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I just did that by accident. I, I really like it. See, all of this stuff going on near the kneecap, it, it, it's all there for a reason. So our tibia, tibial tuberosity, that little highlight. I'm just talking bones right now. I don't want to turn this into an anatomy tutorial. But that's really what I'm thinking about. You know, you can see the inside here of the shin, which would be the tibia. If you've ever been kicked there as a, as a young kid. And again, that surface plane with complication. So very, very important. You see how uh, when I backtrack here, how much more atmospheric that hand looks because of the cast shadow and how the feet have no cast shadow and they're, they kind of look like they're floating. I, I, I mean, that is really, really very important that you understand that and that a little cast shadow certainly goes a very long way. All right, a very long way. Now, the other thing that we've started to do here is just indicating a little bit of what she's attached to. She's just attached to that fabric. And uh, yeah, so a, a, a lot going on, a lot going on with this. Very fun, actually. All right, uh, that's all I got for this one, you guys. I, I really wanna appreciate you uh, listening to me. I have this, like I said, I have this sinus infection. Man, oh man, oh man. Is it really playing havoc with, with my um, eyesight? All of that is really, really playing havoc. So just a, uh, to recap here, atmosphere, surface planes, anatomy, convex line, convex tone, containment system, light to dark, positive and negative space, a lot going on. See you in the next part. <laughs>